Good morning, good afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for joining this session. We're going to be taking a bit of a journey from the past into the present and then looking ahead into the future. So hold tight and let's get going. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ruth Cheesley. My pronouns are she, her. I'm based in the UK. I live in a lovely waterfront town called Ipswich. You can see some pictures of it there on my slides. It's in the bit of England that sticks out the side if you haven't been to the UK before. And you can connect with me online in most places with the username of R Cheesley. So let's get started on this journey. In this session, I'm gonna take a short look at where we are now, where we've come from and what's on both the near and the far horizon and also how we're going to actually get there. But before I go on, I want to take a moment to recognise that this year has brought unprecedented hardship to so many of us. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed our lives in ways we never expected, with many of us, myself included, sadly losing friends and loved ones to this awful virus. Around the world, we've had our eyes opened to the injustice that our fellow human beings experience just because they're different, whether that be due to their skin colour, their sexual orientation, their physical or mental health or ability, or any range of other differences. We've seen through the same technologies that bring us together and unite us, such brutality and hatred being enacted on other human beings that it can sometimes seem like we've lost all sense of common humanity and compassion. Diversity, equity and inclusion is important now more than ever. And as a community, I really urge us all to keep this conversation going. It is not enough to just change your social media profile to black for a day or share a rainbow flag once a year. More action is needed by those of us in positions of power and privilege to keep this conversation alive, to keep pushing for progress and to make sure that we are doing everything we can to make our community a welcoming safe space for everybody. This conference has eight women in the lineup and while we have a diverse group of speakers, many of whom reported that they consider themselves belonging to one of the underrepresented groups as defined by open demographics, I believe we can always do better. If you want to be a part of this, then please do consider joining our diversity and inclusion channel on Slack to continue this important work and help us continue to grow. So although it has been a really, really tough year for many of us all over the world, in the Mortec community, it's also been quite an amazing time to be a part of this project. I can't believe that it was a year and maybe two weeks ago that we were meeting together for our first Mortec community sprint. We went to Amsterdam and we tagged on to the Contribution Day, which happened after uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam. And a team of us, I think there were about 20 or 25 people, got together to work on a couple of things. So one, one group of us worked on figuring out how to implement the governance model that we had just agreed. And the other group worked on the first steps of the Mortic 3 upgrade project. It was our first ever community sprint the first time some of us had ever met each other. And it was a really great opportunity for people to come together and kickstart things for the Mortic project. And kickstart it certainly did. So I want to specifically give a really big shout out to these people. These people stepped up as a result of our initial call for volunteers. Some of them needed a little bit of arm twisting to lead these teams and start putting together the structure that is now becoming well established in this community. Without the support of these amazing folks, we would not be where we are now. They have been putting in many, many hours behind the scenes and a lot of that work goes unnoticed by the wider community. So I just wanna recognize and give thanks to you all for your hard work and your dedication and perseverance this year. So I guess if we were in a physical conference, We'd all be standing up and clapping and cheering and everything. So feel free to do that. Although I can't see you, I'm sure you're doing it in your own little bedroom or office. And as I mentioned, we have actually made a lot of progress this year. We've released the 3.0 upgrade and made regular releases every month since then. We've made some fantastic improvements to key resources in our community, like our documentation, 
And also the education team launched the knowledge base a little while ago, which is becoming a really great resource for all things Mortic. We've also had some really awesome features coming into Mortic 3.1. For example, the company-wide overview that supports account-based marketing and being able to install Mortic at the command line. And also things like sending emails using the Amazon SES API. We've seen a steady growth in contributors and engagement across the whole community, which has really helped us to keep things moving. So I want to extend a big thanks to everyone who's contributed to Mortic at any point. You really do make Mortic what it is today. So that's where we are, but let's just take a step back and refresh ourselves on Mortic's original vision. So Mortic was envisioned as an open source tool that would offer marketing automation to anybody for free, simply by setting up your server, installing your software. At the time, back in 2014, this was truly revolutionary. There was, and probably still really isn't now, any other open source tool available that offered a fully featured marketing automation platform. So Mortic really is something special. And Mortic has transformed the lives of thousands. It's empowered businesses to free their marketing, enabled them to use technology that had traditionally only been available through closed source and expensive, restricted, and not to mention outdated tools. Much has changed since the early days of Mortic. The product itself has matured and grown over the years. We're seeing a growth in both the breadth of adoption and the depth of scale at which Mortic is being used. And we've heard from some speakers already today just how challenging that can be sometimes to scale. With the acquisition of Mortic Inc. by Acquia in May 2019 and the increasing activity in the community, a growing number of enterprises are basing their marketing technology stack on Mortic. Other businesses are also building services on top of Mortic and having great success doing so. So where do we go from here? How do we continue to deliver on this vision? So we absolutely need to ensure that Mortic is the marketing automation tool of choice for the marketer going forwards, and that it's a viable option for any business that wants to add robust marketing automation tools into its technology stack by making it easier for them to extend and to use Mortic. We also need to make sure that we are competitive in the features that we offer when we compare to other tools in the market. I'm going to be talking a bit about some of the initiatives that we're going to be starting this year, which includes several features you've been asking for in the community, and how we plan to establish processes in the community going forward to work on initiatives and come up with new ones. But our technology is not the only thing that has grown and evolved over time. The technologies that Mortic is based on have also undergone really significant changes. And also what we can do with technology available to us has grown massively and expanded. We know that in the future, there's going to be some very significant changes that we need to make in order to just keep pace with the updates to our underlying framework symphony, such as having to rewrite the whole of our user interface before we can do an update to Symphony 5 in a few years time at the very latest. We also know through investigating issues such as problems when scaling Mortic and seeing how technology is moving forwards, that we need to make some fairly major decisions on the future architect of Mortic as a project, a product, sorry. So let's just take a quick look at our last major release, Mortic 3. Mortic 3 was released on June the 15th, 2020. And I want to take a step back and celebrate that. It was a huge effort by everybody who was involved. And I really thank everyone who contributed in any way to this project. Mortic 3 was a major release, but it didn't have any new user facing features. However, nearly 4,000 files had to be changed in the code base over the course of a seven month project. So you might wonder, well, why has so much effort gone into Mortic 3? and end users hardly see any improvements. Well, as you might know, Mortic relies on lots of other packages under the hood, so-called dependencies. These building blocks offer 
a lot of functionality out of the box. Otherwise, the Mautic developers would have had to have written all of those things themselves. And like any software package, these dependencies get up to date, updated from time to time. And that means that Mautic has to keep up to date with those as well. So updating our main dependency, Symfony, the foundation of our product to version three was our first major dependency update since Mautic was created back in 2014 using Symfony 2.4. It was such a large and complex project that this became the whole focus for the 3.0 release. We simply did not have enough resources to introduce any features or make any major architecture or revisions alongside getting this work done. And we had to get this work done. It had to be done to ensure that we were continuing to use a secure and supported version of Symfony. So thankfully, we're confident that the subsequent update we have to do to Symfony 4 will be much less intense than this. In fact, we've already started work for it. And there's a draft pull request in GitHub at the moment with a list of to do's. So we're already starting that process to update to Symfony 4. But since that major release was done, since the Mautic 3 release, we've made a huge amount of progress. So you may remember that we adopted a community release schedule and we've been making monthly releases with bug fixes every month and then quarterly releases with features. In fact, you can get involved with our community sprint on Friday and Saturday if you'd like to help us finalize the 3.2 release which is the next release that's going to have a lot of features. And there are some really cool features coming. I know that many of you in the audience today are marketers. And one of the biggest concerns I hear from you is that we're too focused on developer fo facing changes and we're not focused enough on what the marketer wants and needs. And I hear that concern and we are taking that very seriously. It's a really fine line that we have to walk. Some of the tech changes that we have to do in order to give you a secure application have to be balanced against features that we should be developing for Mautic. If nobody is using Mautic because it's not up to spec, nobody will care about the underlying technology. But if the underlying technology is outdated, complex, insecure, we're not going to attract developers to use and recommend Mautic, let alone get people interested in getting involved and contributing. So with that in mind, before I dive too much into what's coming over the further horizon, I want to share just some insights on what's coming in the near future in the 3.2 release. So this is our next minor release. We're going to be making the release candidate available on Monday next week. And there's already been quite a lot of work going on behind the scenes for this release. Our product team lead, Norman Pratt, is leading the release and he's already been on fire, working through all the new features, getting them tested, asking people to add automated tests and getting them merged. Norman's been doing a fantastic job on that. And the developers and testers who've been keeping things moving forward, you've all been amazing. So as I mentioned, if you want to help with this and get as many bug fixes and features in as you can, please do join us on Friday and Saturday. There's an opportunity for everyone to get involved in this. We need developers, we need marketers and users of Mautic. We need people to help us update our documentation. We need folk who can write social media stuff and write nice articles for the blog. We need designers. Basically, we need you. So what I would ask you to do is join the Mortic community Slack if you're not there already. You can get invite at mortic.org slash Slack. And then you can join the community channel in there. That's where we generally take uh, make announcements about things happening in the community. So I hope to see you Friday and Saturday so that we can really make this an amazing release. So here's some of a sneak peek of some of the features that are coming in 3.2. So if you went to Eki's uh, lightning talk earlier, you will have heard him talking about tag management. Tag management has been contributed by our gold sponsors, Lofra Digital Marketing. And this is a feature I've personally been wanting since the days of Mautic 2.0. It lets you see all of your tags, 
climb them, delete them, edit them, see a filtered list of all the contacts with that tag just by clicking on the button. It's an amazing addition and it will really help people. And you can test this if you want to at the moment on Mortibot. PHP 7.4 support. My goodness, this one has been a mission. We had some real problems with this. It's probably taken in the region, I'm guessing, of 50, maybe 80 contributor hours to track down what was causing our automated test to fail when we updated to PHP 7.4. Massive thanks to everyone who helped with this. The Appia R&D team, Dennis Ameling, who's done a lot of the hard work and a lot of the frustration has been borne on his shoulders. And John Limhart, who kicked off the PR in the first place, plus everyone else who's helped us troubleshooting the problems we had to fix to get this pull request merged. So this one's already been merged into staging ready for the release. So it's pretty much definitely going to be included. OK, the next one, we've been talking about this for some time, about improving automated testing by adding what's called end-to-end -end acceptance tests. And the QE team at Acquia have been working their socks off on this. We're hoping to be able to merge an initial set of basic tests in the 3.2 release, which we can contribute to over time. So if you don't know much about this, it, we're using a tool called Cypress. And Cypress allows you to run tests in the web browser as if it was um, a person actually using Mautic. So it will log in, it will run all of the usual tasks that you do, create a new contact, delete the contact, edit the contact, select multiple, clone, all of those tasks. And they're all done automatically as if it was a user. So it's really exciting because that will also help us pick up bugs that may not be picked up in the other automated tests. And then finally, broadcasting SMS messages to segments. And this one's already been merged as well. This was con contributed by community sponsors Web Mechanic. And as it says on the, on the um, title, it allows you to send broadcast SMS messages to segments. So that's definitely going to be in the next release as well. So what's coming in Mautic 4.0? So 4.0 is our next major release. Major releases come round about yearly. If there's not any backwards compatibility breaking changes, we may skip a year, but generally they'll come yearly. Today I'm going to be sharing some structures that we're putting in place in the community to help us mobilize and organize around projects, which we're aiming to deliver in Mautic 4, which will be delivering in May, at the end of May next year. Some of these structures you've heard mentioned before, if you've been around the community for a little while, some you might be familiar with from other open source communities. So let's get started with the first one, which is initiatives. Initiatives is something we're borrowing from the Drupal project. We define an initiative as a time box and often complex project. It's usually run from six to 12 months, sometimes a bit longer. It will involve multiple stakeholders and may be related to the product or to the community. Strategic initiatives are set by the project lead. And these are grounded in user insights. So what we hear from you is needed in Mortal. The product vision, but what helps us move towards our vision for Mautic being the number one choice for marketers when they want to do marketing automation. Market insights, so what we know is needed from the direction that the market is going in in order for Mautic to remain competitive. And finally, probably more importantly, community discussion. So what we have talked about validated as a community. So that's how I come up with the strategic initiatives. And it's an extensive discussion usually with the team leads as well, particularly product team leads, but um, also the rest of the community leadership team. So there are six strategic initiatives that we're going to be working on this year, 2020 to 2021. To get us started, and these are in alphabetical order, we're going to be working on the underlying structure of our project. 
and we're going to be providing support for people to use Composer if they want to, to manage MORTIC alongside their other technology tools that they have de deployed. If you're interested in any of these initiatives, there's a Slack channel, which I'm mentioning next to the name of the initiative, that you can join and get involved. So we've already heard from two contributors today, Nick Beanhoff from our silver sponsors, Drop Solid, and also Florian Wessels from our gold sponsors, both for digital marketing. They've already been looking into what we need to do in order to make this happen. Unfortunately, we know that these changes are going to be breaking changes, so they will have to wait until MORTIC 4.0 at the earliest. The great thing about this is it's going to encourage and um, permit some other innovations that we want to do, such as having an easier installation of MORTIC, but also innovations like the MORTIC marketplace. The next one is something that I hear about a lot from lots of different sources, and that is the email and landing page builders that we have in MORTIC at the moment. We know it's a real pain point for marketers, and it's one of the things that we're committed to addressing this year. Work has already started to build a team who are going to be driving this initiative forward, and I'm really excited to see this come to fruition. We're planning to develop a more robust tool which allows for configuration and customizations which are user friendly. So again, if you want to get involved with this, please do join the Builders Initiative channel. Another initiative that we really hope will improve the process for new users and prevent some of the issues we see in the updates in the forums and in Slack with installations and updates is to improve that process. So improving the documentation, bringing in some of the checks and warnings we implemented in the MORTIC 3 migration script to check to see if the environment is going to be supportive of MORTIC running and preventing an installation or preventing an upgrade if we know there's going to be a problem with the installation. We also want to generally improve the UI and the upgrade process generally. It's so frustrating to be told, oh, the UI won't work if you've got a big instance, you have to do the update at the command line, particularly for marketers. You might not know what the command line is, let alone be confident running commands like this. And I really want us to find a better way to help our users and to prevent them getting into these worlds of pain that we know they find themselves in. So the next one, when we implement that composer support I was talking about, we're hoping it will also unlock some of the innovations that John Linhart, who's the senior staff engineer at Acquia and longtime MORTIC contributor, has been working on, a MORTIC marketplace. This would enable us to decouple plugins from the core, provide a simple process for installing and managing composers, and under the hood it uses composer, uh, sorry, installing and managing plugins, and under the hood it uses composer. But there's a nice, easy to use user interface sitting on top of that. And again, I'd really love someone to step up and drive this initiative forward. John has already done loads of work on this, and I'm sure he would really value your help to get this over the line. And finally, this is um, taken from the Ideas Forum, and it's one of our top voted items in the Ideas Forum. And that's around resource management in MORTIC. We're actually bringing together a couple of issues that we see. Simple things, like when I used to use MORTIC, um, I really wanted to be able to import and export campaigns to move them from one place to another or just to take a backup. That would be a really helpful um, feature for many of us in the community, but it is a really big job. So we'd love to be able to do this, but it may well take us quite a lot of effort to do that. Also, allowing you to archive resources that are no longer in use so that your MORTIC instance doesn't just become completely clogged up with loads of old uh, junk that you're not using anymore. And I can see the first one about the campaign import export also driving some kind of initiatives around um, having a best practice collection, for example, of campaigns where you could say, well, if you need to do a GDPR double opt-in, here's a campaign, just import it. So I feel like it could also unlock a people's ability to use MORTIC more effectively to see how to do things 
so that they can then learn and grow from that. So you may be thinking, well, that's great. They're Roots initiatives. What about if I've got an idea that I want to implement? We're also having the idea of community initiatives. So if you have a burning desire to work on something that you haven't seen in the strategic initiatives, awesome, absolutely awesome. That's where community initiatives come in. So these are managed by the community leadership team that can be proposed by anyone in the community. Have a look in the ideas forum and see if anyone has already got interest in the thing that you're thinking would be great. And maybe join up with them and see if you can work together and take it to the next team meeting for whichever team is most relevant. If the team leads and the team members support that, then it can be discussed by the leadership team. And when agreed, we can start working on firming up a project brief and making it clear what we're actually trying to do, put some timelines to this initiative and then form a team and get working on it. So that's the strategic and the community initiatives. And another project that we've been working on. Oops, sorry, a few clicks behind. is Tiger Teams. So if you listened into the webinar that we did back in uh, May, was it, or August, I can't remember, we talked about Tiger Teams and that we were intending to bring in Tiger Teams into the community. So if you've never heard this before, and I hadn't ever heard of it before, Eki mentioned it in a meeting one time, um, a Tiger Team is a specialised cross-functional team and they're hyper-focused Multidisciplinary teams of three to six contributors who take ownership and responsibility for something that is very well defined or in or related to the product, but they work in a holistic way across the whole project. These are intended to be the long term structures that support the growth and sharing of specialist knowledge in our community. So ultimately, members will become the key stakeholders in their area of speciality. So in our community, these tiger teams are going to be managed by the product team. They will act as a key stakeholder. So anytime something is being proposed, whether it's a new feature, whether it's a bug fix for a particular area of Mortic, this team will have to sign off to say, yep, that's great. And they will be one of the people who has to agree to the definition of done as to whether that pull request can go live or whether that feature is good to go or whether the proposal is a sound proposal, perhaps for a new project. It may well be that there are several Tiger teams that are involved in an initiative if their expertise is needed. So here are some examples of Tiger teams we're going to be forming this year. If you're interested in knowing more, please do drop past the product team channel on Slack. So all the teams Start with team and then have a hyphen and then the name of the community, uh, name of the team. And as I mentioned earlier, do come and join the sprint on Friday. We would love to hear from you and we would love to help you get these teams started. And they're saying, so uh, how does this fit with working groups? Like we already have some working groups. I remember seeing working groups in the governance model. So we already do have some. We have the infrastructure working group who look after the servers and look after the um, the kind of IT stuff behind the MOSIC project. And we had the working group who organized this event. So we're defining working groups as when there is a clear remit for ongoing long term work on a specific task or a function. They're not time box like initiatives. They're not hyper focused like Tiger teams. There may be a relatively large number of contributors in a working group compared with, for example, a Tiger team. And these will essentially be managed by the community leadership team. And as mentioned, they'll usually be around a task or a project that has longevity. So you can see some examples there of teams we have, teams we might think about creating um, that we will call working groups. So in summary, I appreciate this is a lot to take on in one go. So here's a slide and the slides will be shared as well. Initiatives are time boxed. They're often complex projects and they're usually six to 12 months or longer in duration. And they usually involve multiple stakeholders. Tiger teams, hyper-focused small teams of people, three to six people, they are responsible for becoming key stakeholders and experts in their field of speciality. 
And if you're on GitHub, you'll notice that we've been setting up labels to facilitate this happening for some time so that issues and pull requests can be tagged and a tiger team can be assigned to those labels. Working groups, long-term projects, which could potentially run indefinitely, and they're usually related to some kind of specific task or function. So I hope that's given a bit of an overview of how we're going to approach working on these new initiatives, and more importantly, how you, as morticians, can be involved in these different ways to help make Mortic more successful and more awesome. So some of you keen-eyed folks might already be asking in the questions, you said six initiatives and I only saw five. So our sixth initiative, which is going to span more than one year, so that's why I've left it slightly aside, is what we're calling Mortic Next Generation. So as a project, we have to look further ahead than the next year. We need to be looking two years, five years, 10 years ahead. I know that in the current climate, it's hard to even know what's happening next week, let alone in seven years time. But as a project, we really have to look forward to our future and make sure that what we're doing now is helping us move towards the future vision in what we do right here and now. What has become really clear to us is that we need to make radical changes in the longer term if we're going to remain competitive in the market if we're going to continue to be a market leader in this space, and if we really want to shoot for the stars, and why would we not want to? We've known for some time, it's been discussed in many places over many years, and as a core team, we've been working on this for several months, exploring all the different ways that we could take Mortic forwards into the future, addressing some of the thorny problems that we know exist in Mortic today, and which are blocking us from making real progress. So let's start with where we are at this particular moment in time. So due to the way that Mortic was built and the amount of innovations that were done in a short time in the early days of the product, the code base has become increasingly cumbersome to maintain. This has meant that we have mostly been sealing the cracks in our house instead of addressing what has been causing the problems in the first place. So in practice, what we have seen are the following challenges. Updating one part of Mortic or updating dependencies breaks other parts of Mortic without necessarily us noticing until someone says, I have this bug. And this is due to the massive interdependence of Mortic's modules and the relatively low automated test coverage. So only about 31, 32% of our core code is covered by automated tests. And we're blocked in many places from increasing the coverage because of the complexity of the code. Maintaining Mortic's API, which you use to connect Mortic to other applications, is also double the work. Every single new feature has to be built separately for Mortic's user interface, the thing that you are using Mortic, and again, for the external API. And that results sometimes in inconsistencies, things you can do there but not do here. It results in problems and bugs and so forth. And this, all of this results in less time being available to build the new features or to address the updates we need to do because of these challenges. So it's like this constant vicious cycle. So far, we have literally just kept frantically patching up all the cracks, sometimes with gold to make it look pretty, and shoring up the walls. And that is taking a lot of energy, but not moving us forwards. We are literally fighting to stand still, effectively. And that is frustrating. And I feel that frustration on practically a daily basis. Ultimately, we have to deal with the root cause of the cracks. And this is what has been talked about over years but nothing has been taken forward in a meaningful way. And that ends today. So the core team have been exploring all the options open to us. And I'm going to explain to you now the approach that we are going to take. We've done lots of work on this, and we also recently shared it in the product team meeting and opened up some discussions on the forums around the options that we felt were available to us and the pros and cons of those. So here's what we are proposing from the timeline perspective. We know that we have the upcoming end of life for Symphony 3 in November 2021. 
So by then, we have to be on Symphony 4. This is a change that will not be backwards compatible. So we have the opportunity to bring these in once a year in our major releases. The next one is going to be Mortic 4, which launches, as I mentioned earlier, May 2021. So that's when we're planning on bringing in Symphony 4 support with Mortic 4. As I mentioned, Acquia have already started working on this, and the pull request is there for us to continue working on that collaboratively in the community. We don't anticipate this being anywhere near the scale of the Mortic 3 release. We already did that hard work, thankfully. And once we release Mortic 4, we're going to continue with the same release cadence as we had with Mortic 3, a monthly bug fix, a quarterly feature release. So we are not by any means stopping development of features in Mortic 4. That will continue at full tilt. We also know, however, that the Symphony 4 framework will reach the end of life in November 2023. So by then, we need to have moved up to Symphony 5. And you might think, gosh, 2023, that's like eons away. It's going to come around much sooner than you think. So what we're suggesting is that when we launch Mortic 4, or even before that, a cross-sectional team of developers, of technical architects, marketers, designers, accessibility specialists, user experience specialists, and so forth, will start working on an initiative to build the new Mortic. Mortic Next Generation, we've called it. Mortic Next Generation will still be based on Symphony 5. So it will need to be released by the end of 2022. And that's as that's when Symphony 4 reaches the end of life. We plan for there to be a minimum viable product, which we ship at that time, and then gradually bring in more features in an iterative way thereafter. So the aim is that we have an overlap period with Mortic 4. Some will want to jump straight over or start from scratch right away with the next generation Mortic. But other people may want or need to wait until the features that they need have been implemented. And that's totally fine. We're planning for that. We aim for there to be a clear migration path so that when we actually do get to the end of life of Symphony 4, we'll be able to confidently recommend that everybody migrate up to the next generation of Mortic. But it may be that a group of people want to take on updating the current version of Mortic, so Symphony 4, Mortic 4, um, to support, continue to work on Symphony 5. And if there are people who want to do this, a kind of legacy support, if you like, which is similar to something that happens in the Drupal community, then we can absolutely talk about that and talk about what's going to be involved. It's going to be quite a big project. You're going to have to rewrite the whole user interface from PHP templates to Twig templates and also do the update to Symphony 5. By our count, that's about 632 files just to update the user interface. But there is that option. And people can explore that option if they want to. So with the next generation Mortic, we would basically be building a new house. And while we're building, you'll be able to see the progress in real time and provide feedback. We already do a quarterly community roundup on the blog. But with the start of this project, we'll also be doing quarterly presentations to the community by the team working on this initiative of progress to date on the next generation of Mortic. Sounds really exciting, hey? Once the new house is ready, we'll also invite you to move over. And of course, we'll be providing a moving service, i.e. a migration path, to help make your move as seamless as possible. And you may be asking yourself, well, what is this going to bring for me? Why should I really care about this next generation of Mortic? There are lots of reasons. I've just pulled out a couple. So Mortic next generation is for end users. We, have, we will have a much faster Mortic. Dashboards and the interface will load much quicker, especially when you scale beyond about 2 million contacts, where currently things become really painfully slow. 
there'll be a better, modernized, out of the box experience, that's for sure. We'll have a more modern and scalable architecture, which lets us have much higher automated test coverage, picking up bugs before the code makes it to a release. This means less bugs, more stability, and a much easier environment for developers to work with. And also, due to the technical stuff under the hood, we anticipate that there will be many more features coming at a much faster pace. Pretty cool. And what about for the developers in the audience? Well, from the technical perspective, we're looking at a truly API first approach based on the API platform, which will mean that Mautic can support open API. API client libraries can then be generated automatically for a whole range of different languages, PHP, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, and so on. And that empowers more developers to use Mautic. It also means, and I'm going to hear a cheer from the developers in the audience, that our developer documentation will be self-generating. So the docs will always be up to date. It's one of the biggest bugbears that our docs are out of date as soon as they're written. We may also support GraphQL as well, so we anticipate there'll be much easier to do integrations within the existing application landscape. We're going to be promoting higher quality code with much more extensive automated testing suites. The UI will be fully decoupled, probably React based, and that opens up a huge amount of possibilities for customization and rolling your own UI. Scale issues would become a thing of the past. If you need to scale up, you'll be able to do that with a more modern architecture we're planning. We're looking at implementing the message bus using Symfony Messenger instead of cron jobs for every task. We'll no longer have multiple cron jobs potentially, but just one to process a crew. And even for that, you could just use supervisor or something similar to keep scale workers running instead of the cron. And finally, with the increasing need to bring in data from multiple sources to offload elements like the customer profile, or segmentation to other tools, there will be the ability to support multiple databases, meaning you could plumb Mautic into your customer data platform or a similar tool with ease, and then have that deliver the customer profile while Mautic gets on with what it does best, the marketing automation stuff. So you're probably at this point thinking, well, that's great, but like, how are we going to do this? Well, we're still in the very early stage of figuring this all out. What we're going to be doing over the next months is finalizing the details for this project, discussing any concerns. And this point is really important. We want to learn from other projects where such a thing has happened and it hasn't gone well so that we can take on board what the learnings are and make sure that we implement mitigation strategies to make sure we don't end up doing that failure again. We'll be developing a project plan, chunking this big project down into smaller independent projects and sub projects in a JIRA board, forming a team who are committed to working on the initiative. We'll have initiative coordinators, contributors, project managers, volunteers, and organizations are welcome to come in and take responsibility for as much or as little as they can. So it may be that an organization says, right, I'm OK to take on working collaboration with the community on the UI. And another organization takes on to work on a different aspect of the project. We will be developing a project roadmap, which will be publicly accessible. And as I mentioned, it will allow us to give community updates on a quarterly basis. We plan to ship our MVP at the end of 2022. So how can you get involved with this, with any of the initiatives? Well, with the next generation project, you guessed it, there's a Slack channel for that. Mautic Next Generation. Organizations could commit to sponsoring and working on specific features or sub projects, as I mentioned. Individuals can take up one of those roles which are available and help the initiative and the project. Mautic users can be part of a focus group who will work with the team, reviewing proposals and giving feedback iteratively throughout the projects. It's so important that we have Mautic users involved in this project. I can't emphasize that enough. And if you can't do any of those, tell your friends. We would love to welcome experts from outside the Mautic community who you think would be really awesome to help us with this project. It is ambitious. It is big. It is a little bit scary. 
but we can do this and we have to do this if we want to move forwards. So we already have commitments from several companies who are um, dedicated to pledging resources, knowledge and time towards this initial talk and the others that I mentioned earlier. So this time next year, I'm hoping to have a much more crowded slide from all the amazing individuals and companies who are going to help us build the future of Mautic and really help us move forward as the number one choice for marketers in the field of marketing automation. I know there is a lot of passion in this community. We have come this far and we've done so much and the amount of people here, over 315 people I think it is, at Multicon is testament to this for our first ever conference. I am so excited at the future path that lays ahead for us and I really hope that every one of you feels that you're a part of this journey. Your passion is what drives us forward. It's almost like a plan we've been working on for many years is finally starting to take shape and we're starting to really grow as a project and determine our future. So all that is left now is to engage. Thank you all. I'm here for any questions. I'm sorry we're running a little bit late. I'm available throughout the event if you want to, to catch up with me as well. And my slides will be available at the link here. Cool. Thank you, Ruth, for your presentation and how you solve the technical issues <laughs> quickly. Okay, yeah. I look like uh, we have a couple of, of questions. Do okay. You, I can go through them quickly. Yeah. Cool. So we have one is uh, from uh, Multicon Rocks. It says, how do people step up to get involved in initiatives, tiger team or working groups? Okay, how can you step up to get involved in initiatives, target teams or working groups? Um, so I would say um, a lot of our, what we do as a community on a day to day basis does happen in Slack. So I would say the first thing is to join Slack, mortic.org slash Slack, put in your email address, you can get an invitation. Um, join the community channel, that's where we do a lot of our, this is what's happening in the community. If there's a particular initiative that you want to join, then do look for the channel. If you click browse channels, you'll see the I dash and then it will tell you the initiative. If you're interested in joining marketing, for example, then the marketing team channel, they're all open to anyone, is T slash marketing, for example, or T dash education for education. So I would recommend that's a great way. But also we have a booth at the moment in this event. So if you want to, you can just hop into the booth there'll be someone there hopefully to chat with you. But if not, there's a form and you can fill it in and give your details. And then one of the team will get in touch with you. And the sprint this weekend, which will be published in community channel. Mm -hmm. Easy PC then. We have another question from Dennis Ameling. Uh -huh. says, what kind of a skill sets are you looking for in contributions to move Mautic next generation forward as quickly as possible? Good question. So I think primarily the skill sets that we need are people who use Mautic to be able to, you know, check what we're doing and test what we're doing. But also most importantly, probably is developers who work with Mautic regularly and have a deep knowledge of Mautic. Companies who have developers in that bracket, if you're able to support us by saying, I'll give you a developer for half a day a week or a day a week or something like that if you're in a position that's amazing because that gives us you know we know that we've got that resource one day a week but also any of the other disciplines that are involved with any web application we definitely would, would welcome contributors hmm. yeah definitely there there's even you know contributions that they don't require any you know skill so that's quite yeah. good yeah yeah Cool. And there is a multi fan that is asking, how will we make sure that features and bug fixes still keep coming for the 4.x series while the work starts on the next generation project? Yeah, that's a really important question, Mortic fan, whoever you are. And I think it's something we really need to discuss as a community. So my thoughts are that by getting a clear definition on who is going to be involved in the next generation project and also a clear definition on who is working in the Mautic 4 
Um, those groups may well inter interlink, so there may be people in both. There may be people who choose to work in one or the other. Um, I think having the release date is super important because, I mean, Drew says this when he talked to us in the community council, it's like setting the beating heart of the project. We know that there's a release coming every month. We, you know, we have uh, pull requests to merge and issues to fix, um, and that is not going to go away. So I think it's important that we do balance the importance of both of those, and we do allocate resources to both of those, and not just think, oh, shiny new, and then send all our best developers over there. We do still need to have people who are committed to having us support the ongoing development until we're ready to move over. Cool. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, so I guess we can tell you again, thank you very much. Thank you for making Welcome. this happen, Multicon, with the rest of the team. And uh, let's enjoy the rest of the, the Multicon, right? Awesome. All cool. right. Wonderful. Bye-bye.